Okay, so in this video, we want to discuss the so-called squeeze theorem, and you will see very shortly why we use the word squeeze. It's also sometimes called the sandwich theorem. So we assume we have here three sequences. We have the sequence BN, AN, and CN, and AN is between BN and CN for every N. So that's the assumption, and we assume that both BN and CN converge to L as N goes to infinity. L here could be a real number, it could also be positive and or negative infinity. So if AN is between BN and CN for every N, and both BN and CN converge to L, then automatically AN must converge to L as well. And let's see why this is a very intuitive result. So here, let's visualize our three sequences and L, if we assume that for now L is a real number, along the real line. Suppose it says L, and I'll assume just for argument's sake that BN is smaller than L. This will simplify the argument, and that CN is larger than L. And what we know by assumption is that for any N, AN lies somewhere between BN and CN. So AN is somewhere in here. We don't know exactly, but it's somewhere in here. Now think of why AN will have to converge to L as well. Imagine that the point where BN is is a wall, and imagine the same for the point where CN is for any N. So you have two walls, and imagine yourself, you're trapped between these two walls. Now, as n gets bigger and bigger, both bn and cn are getting closer and closer to l, so the wall on the left is getting closer and closer and closer to l, and the wall on the right is getting closer and closer and closer to l as well. So, if you're trapped between these two walls by bn and cn, and both of these walls are getting closer and closer and closer to L as N goes to infinity, and if you're AN, you have nowhere to go but in the limit, you get <laughs> squeezed exactly at L. And that's why the conclusion is that AN must converge, must converge to L as well, because it gets squeezed between BN and CN right onto L. And that's the intuition. Now for us, almost always, L will end up being either zero or positive infinity. So this is worth mentioning. And when I say for us, I mean in the examples that I will have you guys consider, L will almost always, if not always, be zero or positive infinity. So let me give you two examples of the squeeze theorem, where in the one case L will be zero, in the other L will be infinity. And you will see, from our knowledge of a hierarchy of functions, just by looking at the limit, we will know right away whether we have zero or infinity. And then we'll just prove it rigorously using the squeeze theorem. So here's our first example. Suppose we looked at the limit. as n goes to infinity of 2 to the n over n factorial. 
Now as n goes to infinity, to the n goes to infinity, n factorial goes to infinity, so we have an infinity over infinity case. If you're thinking of using L'Hopital's rule here, the problem is you can differentiate an exponential function, but you cannot differentiate a factorial. And so because of the factorial, you cannot here use L'Hopital's rule. But let's use our intuition, or our knowledge of hierarchy of functions. We know that exponentials are way bigger than, that's, sorry, we know that the factorial is way bigger than an exponential. So we have a lower class function over an upper class function. And as the factorial is way bigger than the exponential, as n goes to infinity, the ratio will shrink to zero. And this is simply from our knowledge of hierarchy of functions, that factorials are way bigger than exponentials. But let's prove this properly with the squeeze theorem. So we have 2 to the n over n factorial. This is positive, so is n factorial, so a ratio of positive terms is always at least 0. So here, if you looked at the squeeze theorem, the bn is always equal to 0. So it's a sequence 0, 0, 0, 0 forever. This is our a n, and now we need to come up with a c n that will also end up converging to 0. Well, let's expand both the numerator and denominator, and then the solution will become apparent. So 2 to the n is simply 2 times itself n times. So there's n terms on the numerator, and we'll also have n terms on the denominator, as n factorial is the product of the first n integers. So 1 times 2 times 3, 4, 5, all the way up to n. Now what's interesting here is the following observation. If you look, starting here, 2 over 2 is 1, 2 over 3 is less than 1, 2 over 4 is less than 1, up to 2 over n minus 1, which is also less than 1. So every single term in the middle is no bigger than 1. And if you multiply real numbers that are all less than 1, the product can only be smaller than 1. So in the end, the whole expression will be at most 2 over 1, which is 2, times, we now replace the middle part by 1, as 1 is larger than our middle product, times the last term, which is 2 over n, and if we simplify, we are left with 4 over n. And this is now our cn. And if you think of it, well now the result is trivial. For every n, 2 to the n over n factorial is between 0 and 4 over n. So as n goes to infinity, well 0 <coughs> is always 0, so it converges to 0. As n goes to infinity, 4 over n also converges to 0, as 4 over infinity will give us 0. And so now you see that 2 to the n over n factorial is between two sequences that both converge to 0, so in the limit, 2 to the n gets squeezed onto 0, as it has nowhere to go. And this is by the squeeze theorem. And so our intuition was right on the money. But this is a slightly more rigorous argument coming from the squeeze theorem. Let's consider a second example where now, as we'll see very simply, the limit will be infinite. So what if we look at the limit, as n goes to positive infinity, of now n factorial 
over ln of n. Again, as n goes to infinity, both terms go to positive infinity. We have an infinity over infinity case. We can't use L'Hopital's rule as we can't differentiate n factorial. But we can again use our hierarchy of functions. We know that factorials are way bigger than logarithmic functions. So even though we have an infinity over infinity case here, our numerator is so much bigger than the denominator that the limit should blow up to positive infinity. Again, with our understanding of hierarchy of functions. But let's show this now. Simple observation before we begin, and this will be the key in providing an inequality. If you sketched a graph of y equals x and y equals the ln of x, you can clearly see that y equals x is bigger than ln of x. And we're thinking again of y equals x and y equals ln of x when x is large, as we're letting here n go to infinity. And so if you do then the ln of x divided by x, this will be smaller than 1. Or if you prefer, if you go the opposite direction, invert both sides, and divide by ln of x, actually this is what we'll be using, and I'll say just ignore this, my mistake, divide by ln of x, Again, when x is large, both are positive. x is larger than ln of x, divide by ln of x. And x over ln of x is larger than 1, as x is larger than ln of x. And now again, we'll expand our expression, so n factorial over ln of n. If we expand our numerator, and here I will Start with n and go down to n minus 1, n minus 2 all the way down to 2 times 1. And this is over ln of n. And now I will put the n over ln of n together as a single term. So this is n over ln of n times, and if I bring these two together, I am left with n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to 2 times 1. That is, of course, n minus 1 factorial. And now, n over ln of n, when n is large, we know that n over ln of n will be much bigger than 1. So this is therefore bigger than, this is bigger than 1, so 1 times, and I leave the n minus 1 factorial as is. So what do we have? Well, that n factorial over the ln of n is at least as big as n minus 1 factorial. But we know that as n goes to infinity, this goes to infinity. I mean, if you think of it, if you want to make this even simpler, this is n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to 1, so it's at least as big as the first term, n minus 1, which clearly goes to infinity as n goes to infinity. But if you think of it, we're saying that as n goes to infinity, n factorial over ln of n is at least as big as infinity. There's not many options. This must converge, or I'm sorry, I should say diverge, to positive infinity. So, n factorial over ln of n as n goes to infinity blows up to positive infinity. And again, I want to stress that most examples that you will see on the problem sheets are examples where if you need to use the squeeze theorem, you will either have a limit of zero, as in our previous example, or a limit of infinity, as in this case. And that's it.